All right, me minions, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your standard foam funkin and turn it into a corpsed pumpkin. Danny did a tutorial on this uh, on Hotcast 24 and he had pictures on his photo bucket page. Uh, but I thought maybe a video would help kind of bring this whole thing together and make this process a lot easier for you. So, uh, for all the minions who subscribe for a year, you now get access to the video page with a plethora of prop how-tos coming your way for 2011. First thing you need to do is you need to get some stencils. So you need some pumpkin stencils, go online, this, you, you can make them yourself. Uh, you can freehand it if you want to, or you know, just like I say, go online and you can go to uh, extremepumpkins.com. Um, there's places, there's sites like Zombie Pumpkins where you can uh, pay, you know, like a minimal fee, and you could buy a bunch of stencils. Um, but so let's take your stencil first off and make sure uh, you affix it to your pumpkin. I just use two pieces of tape to stick it on because you're going to need to bend the tape around. I mean, you can put tape here too, but sometimes it gets bunched up on the corners. I prefer to just tape the top and the bottom. That way you can kind of smooth it out with your hand. What you need to do is take your X-Acto knife and you need to poke holes all the way around, just like you would do for your standard pumpkin. These actually carve pretty similar. They're a little bit harder to carve than a normal pumpkin. But, uh, but they're great, a lot easier to, to cut through than your standard formula. Um, so you basically, you, first thing, you're just gonna start off and you're going to create this kind of dashed line all around the edges. And when you have that done, we'll move on to the next step. So now you can see that you have this dashed outline. So now we can begin to use the X-Acto knife again, but this time, we are going to cut straight through and trim all of these pieces out and then you know and then poke them through as you can see the face is all cut out so we have to move on to our next step which uh, just to make it easy before we start applying the latex and the cotton balls uh, just find some kind of a wooden block this is a six by eight block I had lying around and I drilled the hole and I put this one uh, half inch piece PVC. I had a couple of pieces. If I, if I was sitting down, I'd pr probably just use this little piece, uh, stick it in, because it will fit right on here. But since I'm gonna be doing most of the standing up, I have a much bigger piece here, a couple of, I think it's about two feet, and uh, jammed it in. If you wanna keep this thing uh, in place, all you have to do is apply a little bit of hot glue to the top of it. Okay, put the pumpkin on, and just hold it down, and the hot glue should keep it right, oops, there we go, the hot glue will keep it right in place. And now we have a pumpkin on a stick. Okay, so what you're going to need is a bag of cotton balls. These are Care One. Uh, they sell these at Stop and Shop if you're in the New England area. Um, I mean, you can get the cotton balls anywhere, CVS, whatever. Uh, but what you need to do is you actually need to squeeze the cotton balls. Guys, this may be a little uncomfortable for you. This is what you got to do. You have to squeeze them so you can feel that they have some consistency to them. If you squeeze the cotton ball and it flattens out very easily, you can feel that there's really no consistency to it. You'll know that you can't unravel those. You don't want those. You want ones that you can feel that have a little bit of bulk to them. Then what you want to do, want to do is uh, when you have it, uh, you want to feel around the cotton ball and start to feel where it's gonna, it, will, it will unravel, right? Um, just like some tape, you have to kind of find the edge and then you just unravel it just like so till it's nice and flat right that's pretty much about it just like so so we have a nice flat piece of cotton and now you're going to need to do about a couple of dozen of those for this size pumpkin i'm saying i'm 
probably at least 20 plus we're gonna need. The other tools you're gonna need here are some brushes. You need a nylon brush. This package right here uh, comes with both brushes you need, so it's $3.99. You can buy it at AC Moore's. It has a chip brush and a nylon brush. That's what you need. So you need a nylon and a chip brush. The nylon brush is for applying the latex because if you don't use nylon and you use a uh, normal bristle brush, the brush is going to, you're going to have to toss the brush. You're going to have to throw it away. Plus, it just doesn't work as well. Nylon brush. This entire package of brushes, $3.99 at AC Moore. Uh, another little tip about AC Moore, if you go on their website, every week they have a 50% off coupon. So you just go on their website, print out the coupon. So if you need to buy, which I would highly recommend you use the coupon for the liquid latex. They sell two different brands of liquid latex there typically. Uh, this is the Mold Builder by Craft and Craft. They also sell another one, which was one that I was using before. Um, I don't know, my man Dan says that it doesn't matter. This is a couple of dollars cheaper. So, uh, and it's the same same thing. It's, it's uh, 16 fluid ounces. So uh, I used a 50% off coupon on this. I believe it, it was somewhere around, I don't know, like around 14 bucks or something like that. You used a coupon, boom, save like seven, eight bucks or whatever off the top. So uh, you need the liquid latex and also get a package of brushes. You need a chip and a nylon brush. Okay, next thing. Let's, uh, let's apply some latex and some cotton balls. First up, take some latex. Um, let's see, let's just pick a, a, a spot that's not that complicated to do. We'll do right here. So we're just gonna apply a coat of latex. Doesn't need to be too thick because it, the cotton ball will stick to it pretty easily. So we'll start off and I'm just going to do the kind of the top layer going down. Okay, so that's pretty much about it. And let's take one of our cotton balls and uh, I'm going to kind of squeeze it up the top a little bit because it gets thinner up here. So we'll start up at that stem there and then we want to just kind of pat it down. Just want to be gentle with it, I guess. Nice and gentle. Be a gentle latex lover. Okay. Then you're just going to apply the latex over it. Um, you can go both ways with this. You can go up and down. Um, it's kind of whatever, because as you start to put it on, starts to pull it in one direction so if you kind of mix up the directions I think it works well because it keeps it from uh, you from pulling it out of place it will keep it steady you have to just be gentle very gentle just nice and easy get a nice layer on here this same process works for just about anything that you can think of. Um, I've seen some stuff that Denny has done. Uh, Denny's getting all the plugs this, uh, in this video, but he's done. He's the one who turned me on to uh, to this latex um, cotton ball kind of a uh, process here. So anyway, um, but yeah, you, it's great for corpsing. I'm going to try this on a couple of other uh, projects this year too. Uh, one of the things I like about it is, you know, I was doing a lot of, uh, or trying to do a lot of paper mache. I actually think this is a lot easier as long as you have the right armature. Oh, uh, I, uh, there we go. Alright. So anyway, so this is basically how we start it. And uh, you can kind of move it over with your finger, do whatever. So that's basically what we want to do. We want to create these strips just like the pumpkin we want to just kind of cover that and that's basically all there really is to it okay I finished with the latex and the cotton ball application so we have that all on there and now we're just gonna let it dry you can either let it dry at room temperature or you can take a, a hair dryer or a heat gun to it if you're gonna take a heat gun to it be extremely careful and do not hold it in one place you know too long kind of move it quickly back and forth um, over the latex, over the entire pumpkin uh, to dry it. 
Uh, I'm just going to let it dry at room temperature and then we'll apply the black spray paint. And here it is completely covered with the cheap 99 cent black spray paint from Home Depot. For the coloring, I picked up a couple of these cheap uh, cheap paints from also AC Moore's. I believe these things were on sale for under a buck. Uh, one is burnt umber, the other one, uh, the other one if you're in your craft store or AC Moore's, that's where I do most of my shopping is at AC Moore. Uh, you can find these craft paints. These are Americana. Uh, these are, I think I caught these on sale for 67 cents, something cheap like that. I picked up uh, one tube of uh, burnt umber and the other one of crayon orange. Um, I put some of the orange and then I mixed in some burnt umber. You want the, the color to be a very dark orange to start off with. You can use uh, multiple layers of, of color. You can progressively, you can use three colors. I believe I only used two. I had the base coat of black for this, and then I used a color such as this, which is a uh, very dark brownish orange, and then I just used the, uh, I think almost a straight orange color. Just I think I used just straight up, no, uh, no brown mixed in for the outer the very top layer. So for this layer, like I can say you pick up one of these little uh, tools, I forget what they call these things, and a uh, little pallet mixer. And uh, I have a little, one of those little pallet things around here, but just to restore this in case I make too much, and I have one of the pumpkin, I'm using these little, <laughs> little plastic uh, country crock dish things. So mix it up, it's all set. Now what we're gonna wanna do is take a chip brush. It has to be a chip brush for the dry brushing, okay? You want to just take a little and put it on the tip of your brush. You can kind of knock, get the excess off there. You also want to use the paper to get the excess off. You want the brush, the brush needs to start off to be dry, that's why they call it dry brushing, okay? Best to start on the back until you get used to this technique and start off on spots that can be easily hidden okay because it might I might have had still too much of this on there okay that looks pretty good okay um, and then what you want to do is go against the grain just a light just lightly go back and forth okay so just back and forth back and forth on the other pumpkin I did up and down and it worked okay I think the top layer of orange for the bottom layer I went up and down and then the top layer uh, I went back and forth left to right. So just kind of just just lightly let the brush do the work. You're, you should be very light almost as if the brush is going to fall out of your hand and just go really nice and easy back and forth. Okay. It allows the black to still show up underneath so you're not going to cover up the crevices because you want those to remain black and that's it man you're just gonna do this you can use two or three coats I think you can get away with just doing two but if you want a lot of depth to it use three all right layer one is applied you can either let it dry at room temperature or once again use a hair dryer or heat gun just be cautious when doing so and uh, that will speed up the process and then we can start putting on layer two. Um, I'm just doing this in, uh, in, in two colors of orange, that dark brown and I'm also adding this just this straight up crayon orange now. Uh, whatever you want to do, you know, start off, like I say, start off getting a little bit, get, get the excess off on the paper after you dip your brush in there and pick a spot that you don't really see which is down the bottom of the pumpkin and uh, you start off there just to make sure you get a little bit more of the excess off and then just really quick back and forth over the over the top just really light almost no pressure at all once again let the brush do all the work so just back and forth really light and you'll start to see the orange pop. 
and that's pretty much about it. Oh, the final color has been added and I used some mustard color for the stem. Once again, same technique, just a little dry brush. You want the, the black underneath to, uh, to kind of show through a little bit and, and that's it. That's the entire pro project. It takes a couple hours to do in total. Um, I didn't tally the whole thing up, but I, I could say from start to finish, you know, you're talking I'm probably about uh, uh, maybe two hours to get the whole thing finished. Um, speed up the process by, uh, you know, by using a heat gun or a hair dryer on it. Though I'm not responsible if you burn your house down. Be very careful with the heat gun or a hair dryer. Um, just quick passes over it to help speed up the paint drying process um, and the latex drying process if you want to go that route. But that is up to you and I am not responsible. So no, no lawsuits, please. No, and I do have a lawyer on retainer. He's a listener. He told me he'd help me out if I'm in a jam. Um, so anyway, there you go. The entire process from start to finish. Uh, take your Funkins up a notch. Corpse them up. Make them look creepy. And add a whole new dimension to your pumpkins. And save yourself the hassle of having to run out and buy a boatload of pumpkins every year, cut your costs, wait for after Halloween, buy your Funkins at an amazing discount at Joann's Fabrics, AC Moore, or Michael's, and um, then spend the winter corpsing them up and getting them ready for the next year. All right, later.